He's forced to send his cape and cowl as a decoy while he makes a break for it. Appropriate, as the story has so blurred the lines between Bruce and Batman, that seeing him fleeing like that shows his vulnerability. And likewise, when Andrea rescues him, the uniqueness of their relationship. Some women are drawn to the one or to the other, but Andrea is comfortable in both worlds. After getting him home, she explains what happened that night. The mob was there to get money from Beaumont. If he didn't have it by the following night, they'd be dead. We've got to get to the airport now. What? But you said you'd have the money. It's not that simple. The money's tied up in investments. Dad, I told you those pewter Civil War chess sets are not investments. So they had no choice but to flee the country, and when her father finally raised the money, it would never be enough to repay them. The only way to return would be if they were gone, and thus he created the phantasm. But as for her and Bruce, they might be able to pick back up where they left off, and if so, maybe he can finally leave Batman behind. He's done a lot of good already. Maybe it's enough. But that's when Bruce realizes that, in that old photo of all the crooks, one of those faces was familiar, the man who would one day become the Joker. Hence, when Valestra had gone to see him, the Joker was likely on the list of targets for the Phantasm. While the Joker is paying a little visit to Councilman Reeves, seems that he used the knowledge from Beaumont's dealings to propel himself to this position. So the Joker wants him to help figure out who the real killer is, or rather, isn't considering that the Joker suspects Reeves has a motive for them all to vanish. The Joker gives him a dose of the old stuff that can have you die laughing, but Batman hasn't got time for this nonsense. He needs to know why the Joker would want to mess with him. So the hyena here says that after Beaumont left, Reeves knew where he went, and he asked for help with his first campaign. Financially, I mean. You're not going to get anyone to return home from exile to lick envelopes and put up yard signs. Well, Beaumont didn't give him anything, so Reeves sold him out to the mobsters for the money, which helped him get elected, but lost his chance as employee of the month. After the Joker makes an attempt on Batman's life, just for the fun of it, Andrea has a flashback of her own, of the Joker, before he was the Joker, murdering her father despite paying the mobsters off. Oomph. There was a time when you could count on the Mafia to be forgiving when you skipped town with their money. What is the world coming to? Of course, if he's dead, then it's highly unlikely that he's running around disguised as the Grim Reaper. Yep, it's... I'm impressed, lady. You're harder to kill than a cockroach on steroids. So you figured it out. A Beaumont, but not the Beaumont. It's Andrea. And while the Joker is in a different league, she is not outclassed. You teach old Batsy a thing or two about disappearing. <laughs> Oh, right in the whoopee cushions. Andrea as the Phantasm is a nice twist to the story. It's already established that she's got martial skills like Bruce, and she also has money, brains, and a motivation to fight back against criminals. And the weapon that she uses is fear. The difference is that she fights for pure revenge, to punish the criminals that wronged her, while Batman sets his sights on the larger system, to fight crime itself to ensure that no one else goes through what he did. And yet the tragedy is that the woman he loved the most did go through what he did. Batman's methods didn't prevent it. That's why she chose to take it to the next level. The phantasm shows the danger to the soul of Bruce Wayne, if he were to give in and become what some think that he should, a killer. Of course, that only works so well against someone as crazy as the Joker, so she's nearly killed forcing Batman to toss his bat cycle into this engine to save her, at least from this. But there's no saving her from her thirst for revenge, which she seems to believe matches his own motivations, and the accusation is the hardest that he's been hit. By words, I mean. I think someone hit him with a mailbox once. But the setting of the final confrontation here is fitting. This is where Bruce and Andrea got a chance to see the world of the future. And now in that future... The place is this hollowed-out, empty wreck, a symbol of how... <laughs> oh, yeah, and it's a place where you can get your ass kicked by a building. Of course, the Joker has had a long time to ready this place for whatever turned up, ironically being the one prepared for fighting Batman. And because the Joker doesn't let himself get too attached to things, he has decided to blow this whole place up. 
Well, Batman isn't going to put up with that nonsense and rides the Joker on his jetpack until forcing him to crash, where Andrea is waiting and nabs the Joker, but not before the place explodes. Still, she leaves Bruce the amulet in the Batcave as a final message to him. But for herself, as she says at the end, I'm sorry. Do, do you want to be alone? I am. What is Bruce Wayne? I've answered that question several times now. Bruce Wayne is the mask of the Batman. And that is the tragedy in the character. The fact that that is who he really is. Bruce Wayne and all of the life that he could have had is gone now. And it's a life of loneliness. The tragedy is that the woman he loved, the woman that could have saved him, has the same fate. What is Andrea Beaumont? Look at the title of this film, and the question answers itself. Andrea Beaumont is a wonderful character and is more than just a love interest or an object lesson. She's genuinely likable, to the point that we might be inclined to endorse her way over Batman's, to punish those who would destroy her and leave only a hollowed-out person wanting vengeance. As for the story, Mask of the Phantasm is more than what you'd ever expect from either a Batman story or an animated adaptation of a major property. It isn't an epic, it's the opposite, as the real-world consequences of this story are much less than usual, whether a few mobsters live or die, because the story isn't about the stakes, it's about confronting the fact that Batman is, indeed, a man. And no matter how much he has devoted himself, that human aspect is not dead. This is a film that is as much about what is said, as shown by Alfred at the end, as it is about what isn't said. And that's why this can't be an epic, because a major crisis would overshadow that. Low stakes allow the panic over the phantasm to simmer in the background, allowing the human drama to occupy the brunt of the proceedings. Batman can't hang up the tights if you show him that only he can avert a major disaster. It makes the choice too obvious that he has to keep doing it. You have to make it so that it is believable that he'd be able to say, even though he never says it in the present, that maybe he could finish it. Maybe this could be the end. He has done what he has needed to do. And the thing that says that he can't isn't the big stakes. It's the small ones. There was no Batman to save Andrea's family. And it destroyed her. That tragedy echoing his own is the reminder to him that others out there that he doesn't know are only spared the same because of the Batman. That's why he has to do it, not because of the big problems, but because of those small stakes. And it's the same reason that he has to resist the temptation that she gives into. Batman is not there to punish. Batman is there to protect. He is not the Grim Reaper. He's the Dark Knight. about me, don't you? I die, but your bottom, I bloody well ought to. 